what's up you guys and welcome back to my channel today I will be sharing something a little more personal with you guys I feel like you know I just started this YouTube about a month ago or a little less and I feel like I haven't really told you guys much about myself and I just want you guys to know more about me what I've dealt with plus I always have to keep retelling the story and I feel like Making a video is so much better because I don't have to keep retelling it and retelling it and you guys can really grasp what I'm trying to say. So if you guys would like to see more about this crazy story, then just keep on watching. February 10th 2017 I remember it was my first day working at a coffee shop and it was my new job and um, I remember I drank a lot of coffee that day um, I drank coffee before school in the morning I drank coffee when I got to the job I tried you know different types of coffee espresso shots and when I left my heart was beating really, really fast. Like, I just felt so uncomfortable. I had so much anxiety. So after that, I went home. And when I got home, I went up to the room. And my sister, she was in bed because she had a fever. And she was just coughing and coughing. I mean, it was nonstop coughing. It would not stop. Like, it just kept on going. So you know we were on our way to jersey because i live in jersey but at the time i went to school in brooklyn so we were driving to jersey and in the car the coughing got worse like there wasn't five minutes that went by where she stopped coughing and then the time between every cough got smaller and smaller so that means she was just coughing 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 non-stop and the cough started to sound more intense it started to sound you know more scary it became really really terrifying so then we got to urgent care and we brought her to urgent care she was coughing like crazy and then while we were still waiting in the little room um, you know they took her vitals they took her um, temperature she had a fever and when we got into the room they she started coughing up blood so then they ran to give her like a chest x-ray and they told us that there was a huge pneumonia filling up both that filled up both of her lungs so then they had to take her oxygen and if it was below 90 i believe they said that she had to go in the ambulance to the hospital so it was below and it was just dropping dropping so she went to the ambulance to the hospital um i forgot what hospital it was called but she went to the ambulance to the hospital and it was getting late it was like midnight so um my mother and i decided that we were gonna go home take a shower and nap my father would stay with her and then we would come back the next morning so we went home showered about to take our nap at this time it's around like three four in the morning when we got a call from my father and I was in bed, my mom was in her room, and I just woke up out of nowhere. I don't know how I woke up, I just woke up out of nowhere. I didn't hear anything, I just woke up. Like I had a feeling, I felt something. So my father had called my mother that exact time, I didn't know, and he basically told her that, you need to get to the hospital right now because your daughter is about to die. Now, now that was really intense because when my mother called me to the room i was already up so i ran to the room knowing that something was up so of course we rushed to the hospital and basically my sister went into cardiac arrest her heart stopped beating she flatlined and everything but um they did cpr and they brought her back but she was intubated she was basically like in a coma she wasn't waking up and everything. At that point, I was trying to hold in the tears because, you know, I was, I wasn't, like, I was scared, but I'm strong. I'm very emotional, but I'm still very strong. She had to be transferred to another hospital. This hospital was Morrisville, I believe, in Jersey. So when she got to the new hospital, um, they basically told us the bad news. They told us that something is wrong with the left side of her heart. 
and it's not beating right it's in it's it's bigger so um that's when we started trying to call all the family members we were crying i was crying to my friend on the phone um and i was just very very scared so then you know they said that the only hospital they could bring her to is columbia presbyterian in new york city or this hospital in philadelphia these two hospitals specialize in hearts fixing hearts and heart transplant. They told us that she had to be transferred right away in the ambulance. So, you know, they were prepping her and it took them about a good eight hours just to prep her to go into the ambulance because she was so sick and she could die without all the life support that they, could, they were giving her. So they had to make sure everything was prepped on the ambulance to go to Columbia. If she didn't go to Columbia, she was going to die because at the hospital that they were at, they didn't have the materials to keep her alive. They didn't have the life support, enough life support to keep her alive. So I remember the doctor from Columbia came to the hospital that we were at in Morrisville and she basically told us, she basically told us that Kimura could die while they're transferring her. And at that point, my parents were bawling. My mom was pissed. I remember it. My dad was an emotional wreck. I never even knew my dad was like this. My mom was um, just mad, but they were both crying. And I was the only one trying so hard to hold in my tears. I was doing that for such a long time, holding in my tears, which is so hard for me. But I did it for the sake of my parents and for the sake of my sister. You know, I had to be strong for all of them. So she got to Columbia Presbyterian. They had all the materials that she need needed. When my when we got there, all my family was there, um, and we had to leave that night. That night was really scary to leave her there, but you know, she was in good hands. Those doctors are really, really great there, and they know a lot about the heart. So after a couple weeks of her being there. Um, they gave her different things. They gave her the LVAD and the RVAD, which is basically machines that are put in your heart. And it was this huge machine. It was so scary. Um, and they thought that they didn't think she needed a heart transplant. They thought that, um, that the heart was going to repair with the help of these machines. And unfortunately, it did not. The heart actually got worse. It started to move into the left side of her heart. Her heart was like this big. It was huge. So after a while, um, it started to get worse. If you didn't know that the heart pumps every single organ in the body with blood, it pumps your brain, your kidneys, your liver, everything. And they started to tell us, tell us that her kidney was getting bad. So we knew at that time that she needed a transplant. Now, it was going into March, and March is my birthday. My birthday is March 11th. And I had to celebrate my birthday while my sister was severely sick, waiting for her heart. And it was like so hard for me, but that's one thing I truly admire about myself because no matter how much stuff, how much shit I'm dealing with, I still make myself strong because I don't want to bring other people down. I don't like to make other people feel sad for me. So. I still went out, I still tried to celebrate celebrate my birthday, and I was still a wreck. The weather was horrible and everything, and I tried to look cute. I did everything I could, and I tried to enjoy myself the best that I could. And six days after that, March 17th, they told us that they found a heart for my sister. And we were so happy that day. I remember my mother and I were sitting by the window in the room, and... That was the first day I actually bawled. Like, I was crying. I let it all out, and I was questioning God, and I was saying, you know, you know, if God is really there for us, why is he doing this to us? And all of this stuff, and it was just so hard for me, and I was crying to my mom. Even my mom, my mom actually wasn't giving up. She was still 
feeling good. Now I remember the doctor that came in. This was the doctor that always told us the bad news. She came in and we were like, oh God, what now? What did they see on her tests? What got worse? And she told us that they found a heart for my sister. And at that moment, I was elated. I was so happy. I felt so good because this little girl is suffering and this new heart that they're gonna give her is a cure. Someone died to give my sister her heart. I was so thankful. That night, I went home. They had to do it right away. They had to travel to get the heart and you know, do the surgery right there. I went home and I came back the next morning. All my family was there. We were so happy and the doctors immediately greeted me when I came into the ICU and they told me that um, the surgery went well, no rejection, everything is great, everything went smoothly and she's doing much better than expected. Now, she's still asleep, she's not awake. She's still asleep, she's not awake, you know, it's a huge surgery. But, you know, after a couple days, she finally woke up. It was so, it was such a great experience for us because, you know, I feel like something that tragic really changes you internally. Whether it's you, the person that went through it, or you're like related to the person, like a sister or mother. Something like that really changes you. And I feel like that experience changed me so much because now I look at the world so much differently. I feel like nothing can bring me down, nothing. Like no matter how much bad stuff keeps happening to me, nothing will ever, ever bring me down. After a couple days, my sister, she lost so much weight. She was very, very severely skinny. She was 30 pounds, 34 pounds, I believe. She was very skinny, very malnourished. She had to build her body back up. She um, she couldn't talk, she couldn't walk, she couldn't eat on her own. She had to go to rehab for a month to build herself back up. And now she's here and she you would never guess she's sick. She's a strong, powerful little girl and I look up to my little sister. Um, she is the greatest gift that God has given my family and I love her so so much um now she has a scar right down the middle of her chest and she also has a bunch of holes in her stomach but she loves her scars like she's a little girl that doesn't let stuff like that get to her you know she embraces her scar she, in the summer right after she came out the hospital in I think the ending of March that summer she was good she was out of rehab we went to the pool this little girl had on a two-piece bathing suit and she did not care what anyone said she made friends she was telling everyone about her scars you know she is an amazing person and I love her so much she um, inspires me during the time that she was waiting for the heart my sister had to constantly be intubated reintubated sedated because not only was her heart failing but her lungs were beginning to fail i mean it was filled up with fluid so she couldn't breathe on her own so they had to put this tube in her mouth and it was so hard to watch because they were trying to take it out she almost flatlined again so they put it back in and it was just the worst experience watching her go through that you know um and she had to be on so many sedations sleep sedations helping her with pain she was on morphine a whole bunch of drugs there was just a whole bunch of drugs in the room that she was on and i was so scared that something was going to happen to her brain that she would never be the same after but i'm so thankful that she's here and she's fine and she's the same little girl that she was before and yeah it was a lot to experience and i just want to tell people out there that you can i know this sounds cliche you know people say this all the time but you can get through whatever you're going through it may be hard you may think it's the end of the world you may question god and he does everything for a reason but you can get through 
anything that you're going through, whether it be bigger than what I dealt with or whether it be even smaller. No obstacle or challenge that we face is more than we can bear. I know it may seem like, yes, it is more than we can bear, but nothing is more than we can bear and we can get through it. Whether you just suffered a loss, you lost a loved one, um, you broke up with your boyfriend, um, anything, you can do it and you can get through it. You just have to be strong and you have to have a positive mindset and you will get through it. I know that we all will, you will. And um, yeah, I hope that you guys took away something positive from this video. I love you guys so much. Bye. Thank you so much for watching.